both Republicans and Democrats uh, really don't want to confront the issue of taking down Fidel Castro. A dictator who for 44 years has killed and tortured more people than Saddam Hussein and Osama bin Laden combined. Yet for some reason we leave him only 90 miles off the shores of Florida. He is a greater threat to the United States than any of the dictators in the Middle East or even Asia. For a long time. Republican and Democratic administrations alike, uh, there was more of a concern for uh, stability uh, than for either regime change or for the specific merits of, of an individual or an individual's case. The concern in the last administration, uh, with some justification looking at what happened in the 94 era with the rafter crisis, was to prevent uh, another uh, exodus, a mass exodus of, of people. And I'm afraid, from my distant vantage point, that this was an issue that drove uh, policy. Uh, it was, what can we do to placate Castro, this, this madman in this island? After the Cuban Missile Crisis, I don't think he gave all the nuclear bombs back. I think he may have one or two left. And he has a big bioweapons capability, which he could unleash on Florida and the country. And he has intelligence agents all over Miami and Washington, D.C. and elsewhere. Many have been arrested just in the last year alone. He probably has information that could compromise American politicians. Who knows? Uh, we've seen that recently with a spy scandal in Los Angeles involving a, a Chinese spy that was sleeping with half of the FBI. So you can only speculate, but I believe in the case of Clinton that because of Castro's affinity, his closeness with the communist Chinese, and because the communist Chinese were effectively bribing the Clinton administration and getting national security information in exchange that the Chinese helped Castro extort the cooperation of Clinton. That's a theory. I don't know that for a fact, but uh, with the Clinton administration, anything was possible. We have a history in the United States of having Soviet agents infiltrating the White House. Uh, we had Harry Hopkins, who was the right-hand man to uh, President Franklin D. Roosevelt. He was so close to Roosevelt that he lived in the White House part of the time. And he was a Soviet agent. We know this now from uh, documents that have been unveiled in recent years. Documents coming out of Russia, documents of the Nona papers going to Russia. So uh, it is quite Quite conceivable that there were people in the Clinton administration who uh, who had uh, communist sympathies, Castro sympathies. Hillary Clinton, according to a former friend of mine, now deceased, sadly Barbara Olson, worked for a communist law firm in New York. Uh, some people believe that Hillary Clinton is a communist. Hillary was. Uh, uh, when she was out in Berkeley, California, uh, she was uh, very close to the communists out in Berkeley. She was a radical, and she was also deeply involved in a foundation that was very left-wing. That's true that she was. She was at least sympathetic to the communists in Berkeley. Basically, Castro is what I call a left-wing Nazi. He's regarded by uh, many people as a progressive, as a uh, purveyor of social justice, basically a good guy because he is of the left. There's a perception of people, if you're of the left, you're basically okay. The problem is that such things as left-wing Nazis, in Spanish it would be el fascismo de la, de la izquierda, but the word fascist, the word reactionary, is very, very seldom, if ever, used for people of the left. It's always used for people of the right. And there are such things, of course, as right-wing fascists and reactionary right. But there are also left-wing fascists, the reactionary left. And if Castro were understood to be a man of the reactionary left, then one-third of the Congress of the United States would not be in, in bed with him. Because as leftists, they're not supposed to be in bed with fascists. Fidel Castro is a communist, a dictator, never stood for an election has persecuted uh, people, has ruined the Cuban economy. We have uh, all of these uh, liberal, humanitarian Americans who have nothing but the greatest admiration and sympathy for the man. He took power, uh, actually with the help of 
Americans. Herbert Matthews, who was a correspondent for the New York Times, was instrumental in uh, bringing the uh, attention of the American people to the fact that Castro was holed up in the mountains with some troops. And according to Herbert Matthews, uh, he deserved American support uh, because Batista was such a terrible person and Castro had a chance to overthrow him. And there were many journalists who had uh, similar ideas. There was a reporter for CBS who uh, or helped organize a Fair Play for Cuba committee, which was a committee set up to promote uh, Fidel Castro in this country. Despicable things that Castro was doing to the Cuban people have been glossed over. Castro was very careful not to permit journalists to come into Cuba who were hostile. He had them vetted in advance. If they were hostile to him, they couldn't get into the country. So it was the people who were, he could trust not to uh, go out and report the realities that uh, were admitted as journalists. By and large, most of the reporting, including now we have this Lucia Newman, who is down there for CNN. Lucia Newman was a supporter of the Sandinistas in Nicaragua. And she is a leftist. There is no way that she is going to say anything detrimental to Castro. This is the kind of thing that CNN does. I mean, and they're doing it in Cuba by having a reporter like Lucia Newman. They couldn't get a reporter who would be critical of Castro down there, wouldn't be allowed to put somebody like that in. So this is why the reporting from Cuba has not been uh, honest and uh, it has not uh, given a, a fair view of the, uh, the misery of the Cuban people. I don't think the media has been fair in telling the reality about Cuba, not the, not the establishment media. Some elements of the media have, some talk show hosts and uh, Fox News perhaps. The American media has this very romantic image of Fidel Castro, almost like Woody Allen's movie Bananas. They think he's funny. He's not funny. He's a very deadly and serious dictator. The media often just will give lip service to some outrageous repression that Castro and his regime engage in, so they can't be accused of having said nothing, but then they go on to something else, and basically much of the media doesn't want to talk about it, because their record is one of accommodation with Castro. Castro has kind of this romantic image. You see all these visiting him, everybody from Barbara to Spielberg down there, basically shining his shoes. And they think it's very chic to be a friend of Castro. And thinking of him and talking of him as a progressive and a, not such a bad guy after all, and literacy has been better and some rudimentary health care and the excuses not to blame someone of, who is someone of the left as they would blame a dictator who is otherwise known as a right winger. It'd be all over his case then, but the left tends not to be critical of the left. And that's for that reason the media has not been adequately a descriptive of the evil that man has wrought with Cuban people for what, almost half a century. And then I think the media looks at this as a war that we fought 40 years ago and didn't win, and it's over, and it's not newsworthy. But all of that is not true, and we'll certainly see the evidence of that soon. Castro has been collaborating with dictators and terrorists in this hemisphere and around the world. Not just Osama bin Laden, not just Mohammed Gaddafi of Libya, not just Saddam Hussein, but you have a terrorist now as president of Venezuela, Hugo Chavez. He's not just a communist, he's an avowed terrorist. He has admitted to that. We've got Lula in Brazil, the president of Brazil. We don't know where he is yet, but we do know that he has communist leanings. He's a good friend of Castro's. So the whole Castro issue is going to become much more widely debated in this country, and we hope to educate the American people as to what a threat he is. It's absolutely vital that the American people, and particularly the elected representatives of the American people, understand the truth and reality about Cuba. There are a lot of forces at work that try to present Cuba in a way that is not appropriate. They do this because they think that there's some advantage to themselves whether it be the sale of products or some kind of ideological gratification. It's unclear, but nevertheless, there are a lot of people saying a lot of things which just flat out aren't true about Cuba. Castro talks about the battle of ideas, but what he means by that is he wants his ideas put forward. He can't withstand 
a clash of ideas. And we have to be that. We have to provide the clash. We have to put forward to the American public and to the world uh, the reality of what Castro regime has done to the Cuban people over the past 44 years. Former political prisoners, uh, people who have suffered just unspeakable degradation and punishment in the tropical gulag that Castro maintains. Well, someone has to kind of bring them forward and let them meet with elected members of our Congress. Somebody has to be the voice also that goes into Cuba and, and tries to give hope and encouragement to those Cubans who are prepared to stand up and say enough is enough. That we deserve to live our lives as we see fit, not as someone tells us to wake up and look at what's going on. And my experience is, is that when you present the facts and you tell people, take a step back and look at what's going on, then they do see and they come to the right conclusions. Yo quisiera creer que esta lucha es por mí, por mi futuro, por mi felicidad. Yo sí que tenía fe y todo me lo creí, toda la poesía y toda la pasión sin esperanza. Yo no puedo vivir, a ningún libro no me van a hacer feliz. Alzarme al vuelo es intrínseco para mí, vacúname rápido que mi libre albedrío y se escapa de aquí. Canceló el porvenir y nadie quiso opinar en la tierra más libre de toda América. 